Hey folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and these nuts are Brazil nuts. They're super tasty and also slightly radioactive. They're one of the more radioactive naturally occurring foods. <laughs> so basically put um, Chernobyl and Fukushima had nothing to do with it. This is natural, naturally occurring radiation. How do we know? Because we can test it. That's the nice thing about science. That's why science is the best, is the best uh, method for truth and answers because you can actually test stuff and get real actual data and answers. Isn't that kind of cool? So um, a lot of people will tell you that you can use a Geiger counter for food safety and like you can test stuff with a Geiger counter and you, you can but this would be more like we look out the window we see f like a mushroom cloud because there was just a nuke and we want to know whether or not our canned goods that we had sitting outside in the porch have fallout on them. That's the kind of thing this would be good for. Um, testing for the trace radioactivity inside of food, not good for that. What you need is something called a gamma spectrometer. Luckily, I have one of these. I'm going to test this in the gamma spectrometer and see what's in it. Don't believe the people that tell you that a Geiger counter is good for testing food safety. It's only good after like an emergency and only for like ridiculously high levels of radiation. Um, it's not particularly good for trace levels. Now first off to start this, let's do this. We're going to take a sheet of paper, put it over the nuts, because I don't want to put my Geiger counter right on these nuts. Put that right over top, and we're going to run a 10 minute timed count. That's going to give us 10 minutes with the nuts, and then 10 minutes without the nuts, and we're going to see what kind of um, difference there is between the two of them. Uh, I just told you that you can't use this, and I'm going to show you why. It's not going to be much of a difference. 541 counts in 10 minutes. That translates, of course, into 54.1 counts per minute. So now let's run this again, but without the nuts, and see what we get. 40.9 counts per minute in 10 minutes. Well, we had 54.1, now we have 40.9. So the, these nuts are these nuts are actually radioactive enough that we can detect them with the Geiger counter, and we can actually isolate the difference. Most foods, the radioactivity in them is so traced that the Geiger counter can't even detect it. I had to get nearly the most radioactive food that you can get, not naturally speaking, mind you, in order to be able to detect it. And after we have detected it, we have no idea if it's naturally occurring potassium, if is it Fukushima fallout, I mean, we don't know. So that's what the gamma spectrometer is for, and that's why you don't use a Geiger counter for food analysis. But anyhow, we do know, at least from the Geiger counter, that we've confirmed that there is some radioactivity in this thing right here. Something's coming out of this. What is it? All right, so here's the spectrum we've taken. This was 16,430 seconds, so it's about four and a half hours. And what we have here, I go through this every time, but I'll go through it again, is a bunch of energy channels down here. This is gamma rays. These are gamma rays that were detected, and they were placed in little buckets, depending on how much energy that was in them. So for example, a 1,101 kilo electron volt uh, gamma ray detected would be dropped in this little bucket and we got something around what 42 of that exact energy and you go over a little bit to the right we'll get higher energy so right here in the middle we get 1458 kilo electron volts we have 57 of them and so on so higher energy gammas were put in buckets over that way and lower energy gammas were put in buckets over that way there are 1024 of these little buckets sometimes called bin technically called channels so anyway the count of how many were found in each bucket bin channel whatever you want to call them is over here and the machine can handle all the way up to 16 million. So I'm just scaling the side right here. But as you can see, the highest that we got was channel 37, which was uh, corresponded to about 69.8 kilo electron volts. And we got about 2,080 counts. So anyway, what does this all mean? Well, as we get particular energy readings that are very obviously sticking out, see this guy right here? Do you see how that kind of sticks out against the rest of what was going on here? that is an obvious uh, uh, gamma energy uh, peak, if you will, and this corresponds in this case to um, potassium-40. See, it's the centroid, the most center point of this, if you will, is, uh, is 1,464 kilo electron volts. That's almost dead on for 1,461 
only three off kilo electron volts, which is what you find for potassium 40. So we know there was potassium 40, like a fingerprint. We know there was potassium 40 found in this particular sample. Um, we have to remove the background from this to be absolutely sure to make sure that the potassium 40 didn't just come out of the background and I'll show you that in just a moment. This thing right here though is another piece I want to address. This is the lead fluorescence. So basically there's lead around the detector to keep the background down, to keep a lot of the background radiation that's just natural in the environment out of the test. And it does keep a lot of it from here where all the important stuff's going on, but the price we pay is that we get this big peak right here, and this is from the lead fluorescing. The more radiation that's in the sample, which you'd see right here, the more this will go up. Now, let me show you what the finished sample looks like after I've removed the background from this, because I ran an, a four and a half hour uh, uh, accumulation of the sample, and then I ran a four and a half hour uh, accumulation without the sample and subtracted one from the other, so we'd, we'd have the net result, if you will. And here it is. This is the spectrum fully identified. So the yellow is the background. That's what it looks like without the nuts. Not very much lead fluorescence because not very much radioactive material to make the fluorescence. Um, the blue, the teal blue here, is the actual sample being put into place and you notice the lead fluorescence goes up because there's lots of alphas and betas and things like that coming out of the, out of the, out of the nuts, mostly betas. And as you can see right here on the dot, Radium-226, yep, that's the stuff that makes those, clock glow, those clocks glow. You ever heard of the radium girls that died from the radium paints they used to lick the brushes? Well, that's it right there. At 186.1 keV, that's radium on the dot. So there's radium in them, them there are nuts. Um, one of the daughters of radium is lead-214, and we see it right here. Another lead-214, another lead-214. There's three major lead-214 peaks, and we see all of them right off the bat. Now what we don't see a lot of is bismuth 214. It would be it's a it's, there's a little bit of a, a statistical peak here, and if you do the the statistics, you can see that lead for that um, bismuth 214 is building up right here, but it's not easy enough for the human eye to see. So I instead of giving you the actual confidence intervals and the statistics, I figured I would just show you the obvious peaks you can see very easily. That's why I ran it for four and a half hours. I can actually deduce there's radium in in here in about 10 minutes of running it, but Statistics aren't fun. Well, actually they are fun, but most people don't find them fun. They much prefer to see the little peaks. So anyway, we see the potassium in the background, and we see the potassium in the sample just about coincide with one another. There's a little bit more, when you subtract the background, there's a little bit more potassium inside of the nut than there is just in the background. So what this tells you is that the uh, Brazil nuts have radium-226 in them. They have the daughters of radium, so this is all stuff that comes originally from uranium. That's where the radium's coming from, but you don't see uranium in the spectrum. There may be some, um, but it would be in here and it would be hard to identify. But you, you also get a little bit of potassium. So that's what's in the actual nut. And unlike the Geiger counter, we actually can look at this and empirically know that that's what's in it. Does that make sense? Something you can't do with the Geiger counter. I actually know why these nuts are radioactive. They're radioactive because of this, 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 and this. Something that you can't tell with just a Geiger counter. That's not to knock them. I love Geiger counters, but still, use the right tool for the right job. So we figured out that Brazil nuts are radioactive, and we know it comes from radium-226. What does radium-226 come from? It comes from the ground. It's actually being sucked up, drunk up, if you will, by the roots of the plant. That's where it's coming from. Now, where does the radium-226 in the ground come from? From natural uranium that's in the ground. Because there's natural uranium in pretty much all of the ground. Uranium and thorium and potassium, three radioactive, primordial radioactive materials that are in all the ground. Every single sample I've ever tested of soil has had some amount of those. Now, it's usually trace amounts. We're not talking about big chunks of, of you know, uranium ore or something to that effect, although you can find that in some places. But anyway, there's small amounts of it in all the soil. There's some of it in our bodies, three or 400 micrograms per human body. It's perfectly normal to have it in you. Actually, a little bit more than that, I believe. But anyway, so basically put, the radium-226 is coming out of the ground, being sucked up by the plant, well, the tree, and then it goes in the nuts. And of course, radioactive material can also wash out of the air too. That, that uranium that's in the ground releases radon. That radon washes out from the rain and gets on the plants. Big broadleaf plants get pick it up the worst. That's why tobacco, for example, is radioactive. They don't add the radiation that comes naturally. Well, that's one of the reasons it's radioactive. The other one is for the same reason the Brazil nuts are. It gets picked up out of the soil. So 
Lots of food can be radioactive. This is one of the most radioactive foods, naturally speaking. Now, if it's just not enough for you, and you just want to make it a little bit more radioactive, serve it on a, a uranium dish. Actually, don't do that. That would be bad. In fact, never eat off of these things whatsoever. Um, have them for display, show them to your friends because they're kind of nifty and cool and they do that. But don't eat off of them. Anyhow, so this has been Tom from anti-proton.com and uh, Brazil nuts are slightly radioactive, perfectly safe, won't harm you a bit, and this plate is a different story. So um, thanks a bunch. Bye.